What's up everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to go through and recreate this UNC game day graphic. We're going to start from a blank canvas from square one and try to recreate the same look these guys use for their game day post this year. Um, if you're interested in downloading the template, you can head over to basupportdesigns.com or check out my Patreon. Both of the links will be in the description below. Now we're in Photoshop, let's see what we can come up with. I've got our poster here to the side so we can look at it as we go, make sure we get the achieve the same look. I'm gonna recreate it for this team, the Georgia Soul. I have my logo open and I have a media day shot similar to the one that North Carolina used that we're gonna come back to later. But let's see, the first step, I'm gonna try and copy the layout and the maybe the first part of this is gonna be recreating this square. You can do that by coming over to your toolbar, get the shape tool, rectangular tool, shortcut key is U. Click on it. If you ever wanted to do a different shape, you can always right click and change. But for us, for this, we need the rectangular, rectangular tool. And then you can just click and drag and create your shape. Cool thing about this is it's got an automatic stroke. We want that turned off for now. Um, I'm gonna leave it this light gray color for now. We'll come back and change that. And then make sure all of this is off. Strokes off. Bam, so we have just the rectangular tool that we want. That's a little bit big, um, but the cool thing about this is you can adjust the size of this at any time and it won't distort or pixelate it anyway. Um, if you come up here on the corners, you can rotate it. We want to rotate it just a little bit. That looks pretty good. And then we'll just come here and maybe make it just a little bit bigger. Something like that looks pretty good. Move it to the side. So we have that kind of just as our base. Next, I'm gonna add our game day text. I'm gonna look for a clean font. But there's that. All right, let's go ahead and add our player just so we can kind of see the basic layout of it. <clears throat> Here's our player. We need to go ahead and cut him out. Drag this tab. We can drag him over. No, do not save. All right, now that we have him cut out and in our image, um, something you guys may not do, but you should do, come over here and on your layer right click convert to smart object what that does is lets us add effects on top of the player without changing the the base image so you can always add an effect and and go and change it and take it off and increase it or decrease it you can also adjust the size at any time without distorting the image um, if you're not doing that you might notice when you shrink an image and then later you decide to try and make it bigger it's going to mess up the quality. If you make it a smart object, you'll always have, I'm gonna rename this player. You'll always have that um, option to be able to change and adjust the size without editing it. All right, now let's go in here and change, let's get our logo. Let's get our logo here. And I always do the same thing with all my logos. Those are always gonna be smart objects too, just so I can shrink and enlarge as much as I want. Now I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna change the colors of this rectangle and change this to logo. Here, let's make these a little bit bigger so you can see them. All right, they're all of our layers. So let's go through, let's change the color of our rectangle. Say we want to make it, I think I want to make it this blue primary color. Use the eyedropper tool, change it to blue. And let's get our game day text to white now. Okay, there we go. Not a bad start. 
So we're going to need to add a stroke. If you don't know how to add a stroke, come down here to FX stroke. It's going to bring up this window and we're going to make it a white stroke and let's do something thin about two. There we go. So now we can see this game day, Georgia soul. And we'll leave this here for now. Okay, next thing we're going to continue on with adding our shapes. You can see here on the UNC. Well, our UNC graphic, they have a couple rectangles inside of our main rectangle. So we're going to go ahead and create those. Okay, now let's go to our game day text. This Carolina has this. Um, this shadow fallen. So we're going to create our own. We can do that by hitting control J to duplicate our text, move the copy underneath and on that copy, come down here to FX color overlay and make sure this is set to black. Okay. Filter blur gallery path blur and then make sure you convert it to a smart object let's hide this for now okay as you can see it's got a blur um, almost looks like a drop shadow behind our text but we can change that up by grabbing this point of the this little anchor point and then having the arrow come down in this direction we want the arrow to go in the same direction as the UNC one so it's going to fall this way um, now we have to adjust our settings. Let's zoom in. Got to adjust our settings so it looks more like what they've created. Turn. Make sure you turn center, uh, centered blur off. Move our speed out a little bit and just change with these settings until we get something close to like what they had. And I think and we're getting there. Uh, we might have to. Endpoint speed, taper, there we go. Something like that. That looks pretty good. Pretty close to what they have. Um, yeah, you can see we've got it. It's just falling on there. Next up, we've made some pretty good progress. Let's move on to these um, like paint stroke textures on the side. Let's see if we can create those. Um, I'm going to open up a stock image that I have. Um, I think it's going to work really well on this. I have these like paint stroke edges. You can probably just Google it and find paint strokes. There's millions of pictures out there. I'm going to drag it in here. Um, right now, it's nowhere near what we need, what we're looking for. I'm going to right click, convert it to a smart object, and then shrink it considerably just so I can see it. And I'm going to focus on this yellow part. I want this yellow part to kind of mimic this look right here. And we'll edit it a little bit more. Um, I've got to fill up some space, so I might make it a little bigger than theirs is. Something like that looks pretty good. Okay, and then they have one down here as well. That's pretty similar. Let's go ahead and Control J to duplicate. Control T, transform. That lets us rotate it and bring it down here at, at an angle, something like this. Okay, so we still have this gray, this ugly gray. It doesn't look anything like what we need it to. We're gonna double click on one of those images to get rid of it. All right, how we do that now is come over here, F1, right click, make sure you have the magic wand tool selected and I'm gonna push this gray, okay? It didn't get all the gray out that I wanted it to. All this gray is still in here. That's because this, I'm not even gonna try and say that word, um, this is, selected uncheck that and now click it and you can see it picks up all the pixels that are gray inside of the yellow as well okay then you come down here and mask it um, that's the opposite of what i wanted so to invert hotkey is Control i and that brings back my yellow and erases the gray it's also up here image adjustments invert okay so now this smart object is edited how i need it so I'm going to exit out and make sure you save this. Voila. So now we've just edited both of those paint strokes 
at one time. And we did that by using smart objects. Okay, so what now? Uh, now they're yellow. How do we change that? Let's see. I'm going to um, push I to get our um, eyedropper tool. And I'm going to have our, our green selected as well as our blue just so we can try this out. And I'm going to open this paint stroke again. Do that. Remember, do that again to do that. Uh, remember to open it up. We just double click this section right here. So let's see what this looks like in blue. Bam. Okay, I laid down paint bucket of blue. Control Alt G brings that blue inside. As you can see, this little arrow shows that that blue is now inside of that layer. So that's all we can see. So there it is. We've made that blue. Um, and we're going to roll with that for now. If we want to change it, we can always come back in later and change it. So let's see what's next. Um, next, we need to try and add these little spots here as well. We'll save those for last. So, okay, let's add this square here. Let's add another detailed square. Okay, now let's fill this green with our logo. You can do that by Control C on your logo layer, move down and above it, push Control V get to where you can see it, control T, enlarge that. I'm gonna get something like that and control Alt G because I wanna fill this spot up with something where we can just see some detail in the logo. I use these same um, corner stroke, like paintbrush strokes on these other four corners as well. Just a little bit there. Adjust the angle, remember using control T, control J to duplicate. And this one's gonna be turned this way. Let's have it coming out behind him just a little bit. Something like that. Okay, now we've got our four corners. Okay, I'm actually gonna group these. So all of the these four are my four corners. I'm going to hold the top one, hold shift, and push all the way down so all four of them are selected. Come down here um, and create a new group. So we'll label this, let's do corner brush strokes. All right, so as you can see now, all of this is selected. Um, I have a texture I have the team's called the Georgia soul so I have this music notes texture that I'm gonna fill up um, kind of like they have the Jordan texture and the halftone I'm gonna put that inside of these corner strokes I'm gonna drag it over and I'm gonna push control alt G to make it a clipping mask so it fits almost as you can see it's only inside of these corners for now, let's leave that white. I'm going to control J, duplicate. I'm going to do that a little bit in each corner. Um, layer zero, we have our noise. Now we want to make a little bit more noise, uh, a little bit more grungy, like splatter type stuff. I'm going to do that by coming up here and I have spray paint brushes. I'm going to get these splatters, find a size you like, make sure the blue matches, I'll push right there, and I want to just add that coming out of these corners so we have some more, make it even a little messier, a little grungier looking. And I want that to be pretty small like theirs is, nothing too pronounced, something kind of... All right, now that we have that added, um, this has like a scan line, these really thin scan lines over the corners. So I'm going to create a mask here and I'm gonna get my scan line brush and brush over the corner of these and see if we can't get a similar look. 
Okay, now let's go through and add a little bit more of this noise we see um, around the corners. Add, add that grungy texture. I'm going to do that by using the gradient tool and adding noise to that. Okay, so I'm going to create a new layer down here at the bottom. Come over here to our toolbar. On the paint bucket tool, it's normally the paint bucket tool. Right click it, switch that to gradient. Just pick your color, come up here to basics. And the second one is going to give you whatever color you have selected here. We're going to roll with that blue still. And I'm going to click and drag. And the farther you drag it, the more intense that gradient is going to be. So let's try that. And then filter and noise, add noise. And that, if you can see it, it makes those little dots. Turns everything into those little dots. I'm kind of liking the way that looks. It's just a little intense. Let's see if we move it back a little bit. That's kind of what I'm looking for. All right, and now I'm just going to go through and create a couple layers of this um, all over the graphic, really, especially the corners. All right, there we have it. We've went through and added noise throughout the whole graphic, the whole background, but specifically on these corners, and it fits pretty well. Kind of matches the look we have there. A little bit different. We've got our own flavor to it. Next, I want to go through and add some effects to the player. Um, normally, I, I have a lot of effects on my player and it really has a lot of detail and a lot of pop. I'm not quite sure that would fit this style though. Um, we want it to be kind of flat, scratchy looking almost. Um, the photo is very dark, so I might need to lighten it up some, but let's go into Camera Raw and see if we can get a cool grungy type feel on this. If you've never used Camera Raw, um, you should be. It's a great way to add a whole bunch of different effects and, and edit your images all in one place. Um, but all of your options are here. A ton of different things you can do. Just play with it. Get the look that you want. I'm going to just go through and get our player ready and see what I can come up with. All right, we're back. So I kind of increased the clarity, added some sharpness, and kept the colors kind of flat looking, similar to this one. Uh, I didn't want to do anything crazy. It just really wouldn't match the look that we're going for. So kept it, kept it pretty simple and just brought out some details in it, really. All right, next, um, let's add some information on here and see how that looks. All right, so I have rotated our guy a little bit and I've added game info right here behind him inside of our white square. Same look that the UNC guys have. Um, last part, maybe the biggest part, is going to be adding this facility picture, which may or may not work for everybody. You're going to have to find a, a clean picture for it to look good, but I do have a process in how I want to do that. So let's go into our Rectangular 2 copy, and I need to find the image that I want to have at the bottom of it. For this occasion, the Georgia Soul, I'm going to pull up Georgia Soul. Um, there was an all-star graphic I made for these guys before. Bam. Yeah, simple. This is the Augusta Skyline. So I'm going to click it, drag it into there. Make sure you push Control Alt G and right click Convert to Smart Object. And let's scale it, get it to a decent point. Then we're going to have to do some editing to give it that posterize effect. So I want you to be able to see the buildings, maybe the boats a little bit. trees something like that let's move our location up some so we can see it a little bit better date and time all right let's let's roll with that now let's get to our effect so make sure you have that layer selected i'm going to double click on the smart object and up here i'm going to get rid of the sky we need to get rid of the background this does not always work 
but it is worth um, a try. Go to select sky. Honestly, for what we're working with, that is perfect. Cool. All right, at the bottom, create a layer mask. Sky is selected. That's not what we want. So click on this layer mask and hit Control I. Now we can X out. Make sure you save it. Okay, we're getting there. It's a little closer. Um, I don't know. That looks halfway decent. You might just want to stick with something like that. But if we are recreating the same effect as the North Carolina one, we're going to want to go to Image, Adjustments, Posterize. And this is going to need to be a low number. Let's go with three for now. See how that looks. And let's add a black or a blue to white. We want blue to white. And then go to gradient map. Also make it a control alt G. Okay. So it's getting there a little bit. Not exactly the same. That one's a little scratchier. That one's a little darker. So let's go back into our posterized settings. Let's go to two. All right, our images are a little lighter. So this is gonna be all preference. Decide what you like. I think I'm gonna leave it on two. Yeah, let's go three. Let's go three, gives us a little bit more color. It's not as pronounced as theirs is, but our picture's also not as good. We're dealing with Augusta versus UNC. So you can see the trees, you can see the buildings and the boats a little bit. And there you go. Okay. All right. And now, lastly, I think I want to add some more green to this, give it a little more green to pop. So let's go to, let's select our Georgia Soul logo. And I want to put it inside of these corners. And it might be really small. So let's see. Something like that, I think. And make sure it's all make sure it's all combined with clipping mask. Um, control Alt G. Find pieces of your logos or branding elements that you can use in this to make this your own, make it fit your school, make it fit your team um, best you can. Let's add this logo piece at the bottom and then we'll add some more grunging and be done. All right, now the last step I wanna do is just create just a little more grunginess. If you look closely at this one, you can see there's more splatters and grunge and erased parts right here. So we're gonna go through and add that to all of our squares um <clears throat> we can do that by let's start on this background square one we want to do that by coming down here add a mask black brush and let's try our paint splatter brushes again again i'll put the link down in the bio and let's just oh, wrong brush let's just erase around here on the corners just kind of make it look worn and textured uh, be careful you don't go overboard and do it too much but a little bit is going to look pretty good bam we're going to try and match what they've got going on right there you can see that adds a lot more of that same type of effect they have right there. So let's add it to the corners and the edges of this main square. All right, one last finishing touch. I wanna add a circle similar to what they have on top of the promotion day. So this is kids day for the Georgia soul. I'm going to change the text from to white and this one I'll change to green. I want the white to pop off the page at you and then the location to be secondary. Let's open Let's 
add it over kid today. Let's highlight the promotion. We'll make it our secondary green color. I mean, uh, actually, no, it's on green, so we need to make it blue. Bam. That works out well. Control T, and let's just size it how we need to. All right, and that works. That's kind of what I was looking for. So that's how I recreated the UNC game day graphic. If you'd like to download the PSD file and use this template for your team, head over to basportdesigns.com. A uh, link is going to be in the description below. Make sure you're following me on Instagram as well, BA Sport Designs. And then like, comment, and subscribe on the channel would be greatly appreciated. Be on the lookout for more content coming soon.